I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Living in the riches of my Lord and King, I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Committed to Him in everything I do believe He'll come again. And I know one thing I'm gonna do till then is learn to live in the blessing of Abraham. Hello everyone, I'm David Weeder. This is my wife, Lynn Weeder, and this is the Covenant Living Broadcast. Praise God. What, what does that mean? Well, let me just tell you what that means. <laughs> Everything that has to do with a Christian's life and the success or failures, the health or sickness, the riches, the poverty, everything, happiness, joy, Sadness, depression, everything can be affected, can be improved with the Word of God. Well, what is the Word of God? The Word of God, there are two covenants. The first one, or what is commonly known as the Old Testament, or the Old Covenant, or the first covenant, was made in the blood of men or animals. Uh, but the second covenant, the New Testament, that was ratified and backed by the blood of God himself. Whew. Just saying that gets you excited, makes you want to run, run around the table. <laughs> but don't do that because you might spill your coffee, all right? <laughs> so anyway, that's why the name of this broadcast, Covenant Living, because we live by the rights and privileges that God provided us through covenant. Well, and letting people know it's not just, oh, I said a prayer, I'm going to heaven. It's the future. It's everything. It's mm -hmm. day to day. It's not just Sunday. It's not just Wednesday night. It's how you live. Mm -hmm. it's, it's how you live free from fear. It's how you live in these last days with plagues and diseases and pandemics and epidemics and, and, and economic crises and, you know, gas being however much a gallon and, and everything. It's how you live because God has already provided a way for you to live victoriously and walk through that in authority and power. And it's in the covenant so that's why the name of the broadcast, Covenant Living, glory to God. So let's have a word of prayer, and then we're going to study about the covenant, or one facet of the covenant. Father, we thank you. Lynn and I are so, so pleased and so honored to have this an opportunity to teach and preach your word. We thank you for all of the people who are watching or listening to these broadcasts, and we ask you, sir, and we're in agreement. So there's two of us right here in agreement. We know you're right here in the midst of us seeing that it comes to pass. We ask you to minister to each and every person watching or listening to these broadcasts and that you unveil and reveal to them the mysteries of the kingdom so that they may apply them in their daily lives to produce victory in every single area of life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Well. If you've got your Bible, and I'm sure you do, if you don't, feel free to hit pause or whatever you need to do and get your Bible or your, and your notebook, pull up your phone, whatever, <laughs> whatever method you use, because we're going to look at some scripture today and we're going to start off in Romans chapter 8. We've been here for quite some time. This is our this is our guest, uh, Brother, Brother Hagen used to say, our golden text. <laughs> Glory to God. This is our foundation scripture for these series of broadcasts studying on the law of the spirit of life. So Romans uh, chapter 8 and verse 2, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And in our past studies, we've seen where that word free literally means exempt. It's made us exempt from all these laws that govern sickness and disease and poverty and destruction and accidents and disasters and things like that. <clears throat> and last week, we really, we started really delving and digging into the nuts and bolts of our part of this covenant of the law of the spirit of life. And we saw that it was a covenant issue. 
because in Matthew or in uh, John chapter eight, Jesus said, "The truth shall make you free." May, and that's the same word, that word free in, in John chapter 8, same word here, it means exempt. The truth, the word of God, Jesus said my words are truth. The word is truth and it will make you exempt. If, and we went on and saw this, it's mixed with faith. It has to be mixed with faith. It can't just lay on your coffee table. Well, and it not can't be put just in be you. recited without faith. Right, just wrote, wrote memorization or, 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 or just reading it off the paper, <laughs> you know. It's, it has to become part of you, and you can't do that. Again, we saw it in, Prover in Proverbs chapter 4, attend to my word. It's something that you pay attention to on purpose so that it becomes part of you, mixed with faith, and now you got some, some stuff headed in the right direction. And so we, we looked at those things. If you, if you didn't have an opportunity to watch last week's broadcast, all of our broadcasts are available on demand on our YouTube channel, which is just youtube.com backslash uh, David Weeder Ministries. So you can see it there on the bottom of the, the screen if you're watching this on video. And, and all of them can be accessed through our website too. It's just very simple, davidweeder.org. Let's keep it as simple as possible because this is... You know, I, the, and I don't know if I heard this somewhere or other than the Holy Spirit or not, but uh, I just had a thought just in the last couple of days. It's just so awesome. This and the, the principles that operate our lives are profoundly simple, and yet they're simply profound. It, they really are profoundly simple. Let me Let me... Now, a lot of people say, well, no, no, man, there's a lot to this. I mean, there's, there's this, and then, you, you know, you have to know this, and you've got to mix it with faith and all this stuff. I want you to well, calm down for a minute. Just hold on for a minute. Let me give you an illustration. Now, this won't apply to everybody, but it'll apply to a huge amount of people. The, the, the things that you need to know to drive a car, most people drive a car of some kind at some point in their lives. Most people, particularly in the United States, Western Europe, things like that, drive a car every day. But think back to when you were learning <laughs> how to drive that car. There's, there, I mean, there's laws, mm -hmm. depending on the state, that you have to know in order to be licensed, which means you're maybe not proficient, but passable. <laughs> <laughs> to drive a car safe. We'll just put it that way. Well, then you had to figure out parallel parking. And you got drive and you got reverse and then you got the emergency brake and then you got backing up and you got all these different things that you had been around growing up. You were familiar with them. But man, when you started trying to use them, and, 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 oh man, if you got, if you're talking about a standard, now yeah. you got gear shifts and clutches and brakes and gas all operating at the same time. Well, and you've got different conditions. You've got almost nobody else on the road going 30. Right. And then you've got going faster. And you got rain. More people around you, heavier yeah. traffic. Yeah. And, and, and when you first started off, you wanted somebody that knew a little more than you did about it with you. Mm-hmm. So that they could help you through, and and a lot of <laughs> a lot of times, if, especially if you've got somebody's used to driving where there's not much traffic, and then they go to the big city, they just soon still have somebody with them mm -hmm. to help them navigate the congestion. Well, and then before you could get a license to be on your own, you had to pass a test demonstrating. There was nothing simple about that, but it's simple now. You just go in, start your car, go to the work, go to the grocery store, go on vacation, take the family. You have, you have no problem putting your loved ones in the car and driving now. It's simple to you, but it wasn't back then. Well, this is profoundly simple, but there's some things you have to learn about it. And there's some tests that you have to try out, and you test it a little bit here, 
You know, I, I, I remember my spiritual father, Brother Copeland, saying he didn't start off believing for property and planes. He started off with a pair of socks. <laughs> and he practiced with a pair of socks and using his faith in the principles of the kingdom to get a pair of socks. Well, and that's something that a lot of us really want to skip over because we're like, well, I can go buy socks, but it's something to practice on. Here's another aspect of that car illustration, too. And, uh, I mean, you know, we're all about real. I mean, that's what, that's what she and I, we want to teach real people like you how to have real working faith in a real God to achieve real victory in real life. Now, I know that's a lot of reals, <laughs> but uh, there's a reason for the reals. I'm trying to get a point across. This is made to and designed to work in real life. It's a lot of people, they go to church on Sunday and, you know, that's all the more they... It's their checklist. Yeah, exactly. I went to church on Sunday. That makes me a good person. Right. So I don't mean this to be to, to, to be rude or, 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 uh, or anything like that, but it's just being real here, going back to the car illustration, okay? There are hundreds of thousands of people that die in car crashes every year. Violations of the laws that it takes to operate a law either by them or someone else. But that doesn't keep them from driving a car most of the time. Most people, even after they got their license and, 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 and achieved a level of proficiency, have had an accident. A fender bender, something. Mm -hmm. Well, if everybody was doing exactly what they needed to, to operate their car, an accident wouldn't happen. Fender bender wouldn't happen. But it usually, somewhere along the lines, you, you're going to miss something. And you get a little bump. Or something. That doesn't mean you should give the whole thing up. In fact, when somebody has had an accident and they say, I'm never driving again, everybody around them encourages them and says, it was just, it was a mistake. You learn from it and you move on and you do your best. Exactly. Where... With this, so much of the time when there's been a problem, there's been a fender bender, there's been a sickness, there's been a death, there's been electricity shut off. Like, never mind, this didn't work. Mm -hmm. And you don't have the people come up around you and say, come on, baby, it's okay. I'll, I'll be here with you. Let's, let's hit this again. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, just uh, get the illustration. These things are simple. But they're profound and they work by laws. They're not just, well, you know, I think it ought to work this way, so we're going to do it this way. Well, you're going to have a fender bender. <laughs> okay? Um, so they're not complicated. You just have to practice and become proficient. Okay? And that was kind of a side issue, but, you know, like Brother Hagen used to say, you know, sometimes I think the, the side trips help us as much as the, as, as the main line. Don't give up. These things come. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, and practice. <laughs> the, the, the manifestation in your day-to-day -day life comes by practice and proficiency. So, last week we talked about and covered uh, two aspects of Romans 8, 2. We talked about faith and we talked about the word. And kind of almost as subcategories of the word... I want to look at a couple other aspects that are contained, but you have to look a little closer for them because, like I said, there's they're, they're kind of subcategories of the word. And one of that, one of them is the name. So turn over to Acts chapter 4, and let's look there. I've got swords laying around here. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, Acts chapter 4. If you're there, mm -hmm. you can go ahead and read that if you Which want. Which verse? It's, um, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to read verse 12. Verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Okay, so uh, Lynn touched on it last week, and we, we talked about it just a little bit, our salvation package. You know, that word made us free, made us exempt uh, another way of saying that really is our salvation package. And there's no other name 
uh, through which men can experience that salvation package. You know, and we talked about that especially towards the end of last week's broadcast. But let me show you another way that the name ties in with the word, and that's found in Psalm. Uh, let me get over there because I wasn't planning on going there. <laughs> Psalm 138. Scroll, 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 turn, 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 whichever, you know, whatever applies to <laughs> what you're using. Psalm 138, verse 2. In the King James, it says, I will worship towards the holy temple and praise thy name for your loving kindness and for your truth. Remember, thy word is truth. For you have magnified your word above all thy name. Now, I heard an illustration for years about that that was wonderful, and it was talking about a contract, and you've got all the articles of the contract, and then it was signed at the bottom by the name, and that's what it meant, exalt the word above the name at the bottom. And that's, it, look, if you happen to have the New Living Translation, look there with me, and if not, just listen and I'll read it to you. The New Living Translation literally says, I bow before your holy temple as I worship, I praise your name for your unfailing love and faithfulness, for your promises, the word, are backed, listen to this, by all the honor of your name. Glory to God. Now, in order to get the full teaching, because if, if I delve into the name, we're going to be here till next week sometime. So I, I've done that to a certain extent. All of our videos are available on our YouTube channel. Go there, go back, and find the, the, the broadcast on faith in the name. I go into it in a lot of detail about the, the power and authority contained in the name. And the word is backed by all the honor of his name. So it's a, it's a part of the, the ingredients of uh, Romans chapter 8, and verse 2. And so you've got to have faith. You've got to have the word mixed with faith. You've got to invoke the name which backs the word that's mixed with faith. And now let's look at the blood, another essential ingredient, because remember, we are talking about the spirit of life, the law of the spirit of life. So if you look in Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11, you will see, let's see, in Leviticus, first, I, I, let's go ahead back up to verse uh, 10. I apologize. I misspoke there. Whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn among you that eateth any manner of blood... I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood and will cut him off from among his people. Now, that's pretty serious business. So why is that? For the life of the flesh is in the blood. So it's the life is in the blood. Now, turn over with me to Hebrews chapter 13. We'll get over here into our specific covenant lest you think that this is an Old, uh, or Old Testament or First Covenant issue, look over here at Hebrews chapter 13, and uh, oh, let's see. Sweetheart, why don't you start there in verse 11. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Okay, so now mm. we were, he's referring back to the first covenant talking about the blood of animals. Okay, now drop down and let's begin in verse 20. Now the grace, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Ah, the make, blood of the everlasting covenant. Go ahead. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in the sight 
through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. The Word. The Word of God. It's through that blood that we're strengthened and stabilized. There's also something else through the blood. Go over to Colossians chapter 1. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 1. And let's see. <laughs> let's start in verse 13. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has, now notice that's past tense, has already translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. We've talked about that. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. It's already taken place. Translated us into the, the, the kingdom of his dear son in whom... Now we're back to in Christ. In whom? In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Redemption, separation, exemption. We have our exemption, our salvation package, our exceptionalism, our redemption is through his blood. The blood of the everlasting covenant, the word, the name, faith, the blood. You see how this all works together and it comes together to support and back up the law. This is why it's a law. All of these things are established. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus exempts us. This is how it works. This is the nuts and bolts. So we have to spend time in the Word, attend to the Word. Then we have to mix it with trust. We have to mix it with faith, which comes by the hearing of the Word, because it doesn't profit us if we don't mix it with faith. Then we have to understand, know, keep it in our spirit, stir ourselves up, that it's sealed in the blood of God Himself and backed by the name that's above every name that's named. All of these things, you meditate on them and you let them percolate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, let them, you let them bubble. You meditate on well, them day and night. And one of the versions or definitions of meditate is to murmur. You sit there and you talk to yourself about it. You say it over and over. Mm -hmm. And, you, and, you, and you, you, you say it out loud if at all possible, whenever you're, you know, whenever you can, say it out loud because you believe your voice faster than you believe anyone else's voice, okay? Say it out loud. Say it where you can hear it. That way you're hearing the Word of God as well. And you're murmuring and you're thinking about, sing it. Sing, find some people. David, look up Brother David Ingalls on, on, on YouTube or, or Google him, whatever. I, don't, whatever. <laughs> I think he's maybe on iTunes. Anyway, look, <laughs> look him up. His songs are scripture put to music. Mm -hmm. You know, Brother Kenneth Copeland's songs, Scripture, put the music, put them in your ears, put them in your ears, put them in your ears, let them bring faith. And then the absolute most powerful force that never, ever fails, love. You got to walk in love. You got to live and walk and conduct yourself in love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, love never fails. And we find out in the, in the book of Galatians that faith works by love. by love. Car works by gas. No gas, no move. <laughs> faith works by love. No love, no faith production. So you can't mix the faith with the word. And so the whole law crumbles. It doesn't work. These things are simple, but they have to be put together. They have to be applied. You have to push in the clutch, put it in gear. You have to let out on the clutch while you're pushing down on the gas at the same time. And you have to learn to do it the right way so you don't stall the car. And it changes depending on the incline. And it changes on the <laughs> incline. Okay, it's simple, but it's got to be worked, and it's got to be practiced, 
And that's what we're about, <laughs> is getting on here and going through these things and showing you how they work, teaching you how they work, pulling this part out, talking about it, pulling this part out, talking about it. Once we talk about these things and teach on them, then we put them back together and show you how they work together. Isn't it wonderful? We're just so, I'm so thrilled that the Lord has called me into the teaching aspect <laughs> of the five-fold gifts of ministry. It's just nothing like it. The only thing that I'm missing through these broadcasts is I can't see your eyes when that light bulb goes on <laughs> and you go, oh, yeah. But you can write to us about it. That is very true. Please do so. Just go to davidweeder.org and you can, there's click, there's a, the, uh, what do you call those things? Tabs. There's a tab. <laughs> you can tell I, 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 I'm not the tech savvy one in the household. Um, click on the tab that says contact us and send us an email. And just let us know that the teaching has blessed you or, 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 or give us a testimony. Let us know you got born again through the broadcast. We'll pray with you. That's another thing. You could click on, go to the website. Our phone number is there. Call in and, and, and give us a testimony. Just get to us so that we can interact with you. Love you. We love you so much, and that's what we do. Now, listen, this is what we do. We get the word out to people. We, we're called to teach in Luke chapter 8, that's what those, those women did with Jesus' ministry. They partnered with him to get in. He went about teaching and preaching in all the villages. Well, we're teaching and preaching in all the villages through this <laughs> camera right here. So don't go anywhere. Stay right there. I want to talk to you for just a minute about this, all right? Don't go anywhere now. All right. Hey, it's an exciting day today because we're giving you an opportunity to actually do the word found in Galatians 6 and verse 6. Let him that is taught in the word communicate or partner with unto him that teaches in all good things. That word communicate doesn't only mean partner, but it means to, to sow and interact with, get in this thing together. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. You know, this is what the women did in Luke chapter 8, the first three verses. It said that Jesus went about all the villages preaching and teaching the word of the living God. And the women who were partnered with him, they sowed into his ministry of their substance. And glory to God, you know, it, it goes on here in Galatians 6 to talk about sowing into the things that are spiritual. That's what you do when you sow into the teaching of the word. And we're, you have that opportunity today. Father, we thank you. I'm asking you to reveal to the people exactly what their part is in today's offering. I thank you and praise you. We receive it and we sow it deep into the ground of David Weeder Ministries, and we thank you now for their hundredfold return now in this time. Glory to God. Thank you, partners and friends, for making these broadcasts possible. Contact us at davidweeder.org or call us at 1-800-988-5380.